Hey everybody, it's Steve Guzzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum as well as DVD Architect. And here we are in Vegas Movie Studio. Now, for people especially who are relatively new to Vegas or Vegas Movie Studio, the single most perplexing thing is something called Auto Ripple or the Ripple Control. It's not because it's poorly designed, it's simply because it's a feature that until you can get your head around how it actually works and how it functions, it can just kind of like, why did that happen? It kind of continually confounds and confuses people. Basically, what Auto Ripple does, and I have it turned on right now, is when you add a clip or an event to your timeline, all of the events to the right of it move off to the right. Let me show you an example. I'm just gonna take a short clip here drag it down to my timeline and when I add it to my timeline you see how all of the other video clips to the right or the other events move off further to the right to allow for it. Likewise if I remove a clip or an event from my timeline all of the events to the right move in to fill the gap and that's often how you'd like your timeline to function particularly as you're just assembling clips but it gets a little more complicated and frustrating when you're trying to do something and you can't understand why it happens. So for instance, if I were to grab this event and I just wanna move this event down to the end of my timeline, you notice that when I try to move it, everything to the right of it comes with me. That's part of Auto Ripple. Everything off to the right is gonna come with it, including things on other tracks. And that's a little frustrating. How do I keep that from happening? Likewise, there are times when, for instance, I might have my timeline assembled like Oh, look at that. See, that's happening too, is when I try to move that clip. Likewise, I'll be assembling my timeline and I want to remove something from my timeline, but I don't want any of the other events to move in. And it frustrates me. How do I stop that from happening? Well, this is the auto ripple control. It's right down here at the bottom of the timeline. This is auto ripple. And if I turn it off, those functions cease to function. <laughs> so if I were to select, say for instance, this event on my timeline, and delete it, you notice that it leaves a gap on the timeline. Let's control Z to undo that. Likewise, if I were to add a clip to the timeline, you notice that what happens is that instead of things moving aside, this event overwrites those events. Now, some other things might also be happening. If you have right here, automatic crossfades turned on, when you add a clip on top of an event, you get kind of a uh, a crossfade between the two events, so some weird stuff. So sometimes you want your auto ripple on and sometimes you want it off. Likewise, if I want to move individual pieces here on the timeline, say I wanted to move this event to the end of my timeline, I do want to make sure that my auto ripple is turned off so that that way when I grab this event and move it, none of the other events move with it. Now to make it a little more complicated, <laughs> there are various settings for auto ripple. So for instance, if I turn my auto ripple on and I click on this little down arrow next to it, I can have my auto ripple affect only the track where events are being added or removed, or I can have it affect all tracks. There are also markers and regions in case you have, like I have DVD markers, or in case you have regions selected, or in case you have uh, just timeline markers on your timeline. Uh, they will move in conjunction or not move in conjunction with the other events on your timeline, depending on which setting you select here. So if I select only affected tracks, you notice that when I select an event here on my timeline and delete it, that only the clips or events on that particular track move. Or if I were to add a clip here to the timeline, an event to the timeline, you notice only things on that particular track are affected because we have that option selected when all are selected, then any changes will affect all events on the timeline. What makes this kind of complicated is there really is no perfect setting for it. I usually operate with it turned on because I'm adding events or adding clips to my timeline and building out my timeline and removing things, but sometimes I have to turn it off. And that's just how it works, and that's where the tool is. You just have to know that sometimes it's on, and sometimes you need it off. Just know that it's a feature that sometimes takes a little getting used to, but once you do, it will become second nature. Trust me on this. Anyway, if you want to see many more tips and tutorials here for Vegas Movie Studio Platinum or DVD Architect, including some wonderful basic training tutorials, check out the many tips and tutorials we have here at moviepix.com. And if you want to know 
everything there is about any of these programs, check out our moviepicks.com guidebooks for Vegas Movie Studio Platinum as well as DVD Architect. They are available at Amazon.com. I'm Steve Guzzetti. Thanks for joining me. See you again real soon.